is up, everybody? Keith Jamison, a.k.a. Gator Guy 231 across the DFS industry. Back for a Friday preview for the Bundesliga with my boy Lee Snyder, a.k.a. DFS Advisor. What's up, my friend? Hey, man. Not too much. Uh, this, uh, you know, this could be one of the last Bundesliga rundowns we do with, uh, with EPL coming back. I, I was going to say that. I mean, uh, who the heck knows? I, I, I think today is interesting. Um, actually, you know what? I guess it's not because I was just going to be like, they, they kind of just like chopped off these showdowns or I don't know if you noticed that they're all the same, like $15, 784 people prize pool. So I don't know if they know what they're doing right now. <laughs> I mean, today's going to be wild. We have like four showdowns with an hour in between each one. Yeah. And I think that that was the right decision. Like I made a comment on Twitter that I just think that, uh, I think the Liga one was just stupid. Like not, not only that, but like, uh, I'm going to do a little like preview about all of them, but like the pricing on it's just insane. Like you can't make a lineup that you like on that two gamer. Yeah. yeah. I haven't, lo- I haven't looked at it. Don't. I mean, I, I think, <laughs> I think Laird had it right. Like we don't have to play it. I mean, I'm going to, but I think that you're smart enough to play it. Yeah. But anyhow, you would be very not smart to not play this Bundesliga slate because I think this is um, – if you are a optimal type of player, which I, like, I, I would rather there never be a goal ever again, this might be the slate for you. I, I think that it is flooded – with high floor guys that are priced fairly appropriately. And then you have some of the goal dependent or less, less high floor guys that are really priced out of the range. Um, so you're really kind of, kind of circle to, uh, to the crosses. Are, are you seeing this the same way? Yeah. I don't know if you can see, but I'm wearing yellow here for, uh, for Dortmund because I like, uh, you know, I like overpriced players on DK slates. Well, so I think we're seeing the same way. I think, um, you know, it's like you open up this, like, let, let's, let's go to the odds and we can just kind of talk about some of like what we're seeing here. So let me scroll up here. Odds. So we do have Dortmund, as you're saying, is the biggest favorite on the slate. They are minus um, 280. Um, and then away. And then we have Wolfsburg, the second biggest favorite, minus 145. The rest of the games are relative pick you know you have slight favorites at home but not enough to even get over even money um so why don't you go ahead and talk Dortmund real quick with them being the biggest favorite in the slate and the highest priced guys on the slate as well yeah I mean I think it's what we've seen uh in a, a few of the past slates where we've had Dortmund as um the biggest favorite you know obviously you cannot argue that the Dortmund guys have the highest goal upside, but the way they're priced and, you know, what you're getting in terms of a floor, I mean, you need at least a a goal from some of these guys just to hit value and to get hurt by it. Even in GPP, you're going to need a brace out of a guy like, you know, Sancho. So um, I think you can, you know, at least the way I'm looking at it, I don't need any Dortmund piece in a, in a cash or optimal build. Correct. But, and I think what's super interesting is, so I like, I think back to the first slate when they were big favorites and it's like, you know, here comes the hot take. You don't need Dortmund. Um, They score four goals, but if you remember, you know, outside of Guerrero showing up with two, he was the only guy that had like any ownership. And I think tomorrow is the same way. Like, you know, Sancho could show up with two or three goals and yeah, like GPP is going to hurt, but in cash games, you're going to see that happen. I don't think you're going to see your little icon move very much. I just don't think people get there. Yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, I could see some ownership on Guerrero, right? Just because he's kind of the, the lowest price guy that you feel pretty good about there. Um, I don't ever feel good about him. <laughs> no, because he can always show up with a four point game. Dude, like that showdown. Um, I made a couple of builds, but I was mostly light on Guerrero just because I don't like his DFS game. I'm sure he's a great person in real life. I just don't like him in <laughs> DFS. But um, I think he came out, I think he had three crosses the first 20 minutes. And I'm just like, once again, like Guerrero fucks me. And I don't know if you saw it. It took, I think, another 60 minutes for him to get another cross. And I'm like, oh, this guy, this guy. 
Oh, this is probably, you know, he's liable to show up with a brace too in a game like this. So who knows? And I mean, that's the thing with Dortmund that's just so uh, difficult because there's like such fluidity in their, their attack. Like if you just like look at these maps and if you even watch them, just those, those wingbacks can, you know, either just be just kind of stay wide, but like so often it's like the ball, especially when Holland comes in and he's in, they, they just literally just bomb down and just kind of work off of Sancho or Hazard's movements. And, you know, you see Hakimi in the box so often. So it's just, they're a threat, um, but they just come with, you know, no sets. So I guess Guerrero's half the sets, but like the Hakimi, no sets and a few crosses and just, just hope that it's part of the goal. Um, I do think that um, the Wolfsburg um, second forward is going to be kind of like, I just think it's such a good slate. Uh, let's go there. I, I, let me let me just kind of like go over the rest of the odds and let's just go in the players. So I just I love I love talking about the construction series. So um, again, Wolfsburg's second biggest favorite, and then I think the most interesting match, and I'll let you kind of share a couple of things on this, is going to be down here, which is um, uh, which is Werder Bremen versus. I, why do I always forget? Is it Dusseldorf? Is that uh, Paderborn? Paderborn, Jesus. Um, Paderborn. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you talk about like why like, that game's gonna be so damn interesting from a DFS perspective? Yeah, I mean, on the face of it, it's I think it's the two very bottom teams in the Bundesliga, so you know it could go overlooked. But um, yeah, it's very evenly matched. Um, so I, you know, I think you're gonna see production from a DFS standpoint on both sides of it. Um, and then you know you're potentially getting some some very nicely priced set piece takers. Um, you know, if it's on the Bremen side, if Bittencourt's back in, he could be taking. If he's out, well, then you're looking at August Stinson or Friedel at left back, potentially taking almost everything. And then, yeah, you know, I, I saw uh, your boy Proger there at 6'9", but then I, I checked the corner logs and, and Antwi Adeji uh, yeah. is cut. Yeah, he's cutting into his share over there. So he's actually really interesting at 5,700. Well, and, and I think that that's kind of where I wanted to go with it. You have uh, – there's a strong possibility that you see two Paderborn forwards in an optimal cash build as a home dog and the worst team in the Bundesliga. And you go, yep, I get it. Yeah, I mean, two of them, I'm not sure I go there, but – well, but I, well, well, go ahead. Let's we'll hear. Jump in. We'll jump. We'll jump in right now, and let, let's let's start right there. Let me let me pull up DK just so we can at least kind of get salaries. Um, so let's just start right there um, at the four position, and I'll go straight over to Paderborn. Um, neither one of them is over seven k. Um, Proger, we are three weeks removed from him being over eight thousand and being fifty five to sixty five percent owned. So now at sixty nine hundred. You know, he immediately, I think, becomes one of the more the highest owned forwards come to come tomorrow, with or without Dash. Agreed. Uh, so, or, or, you, or is that where you where the heartburn starts coming? Well, personally, there's there's a player that you know costs only a few hundred more that I probably have some more interest in. Yeah, Bracalo. Um, yeah, Bracalo. But I mean, the way I see it is we have an unclear set piece situation between Proger and, and a Desi, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be some sort of split. Um, split. Yeah. And I think I rather just take the $1,200 discount there. Um, you know, but then again, it depends where you are in a build, right? If you mm -hmm. have enough for Proger, then I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. And I, I'm more so making the, uh, the point that, I think there are a couple of builds that where you want Bracalo and you find a couple of yourself, a couple hundred short. And so then you got Proker there and, and you, and my conversation with myself has become, is it really that big of a difference between the two um, in terms of like who I'm trading off or is it just the DFS builder in us that goes, man, I really want some Wolfberg exposure. Um, <laughs> so let me take Bracalo. And then my, I gave up a player or like a build I liked more to get Wolfberg's exposure, and he subs off at 65 because since Lee mentioned to us that he's 
he always subs. I think he's played how many straight 90s? <laughs> I think the last two. <laughs> yeah. I think since I think since we both talked about how he always subs off, he's two straight for 90. But, you know, you get one of these 65s, and he's sitting there with 6.5 DK, and you go, huh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, and I, I wish I could – like give give people some more detail on why he's played 90 the last two like I don't know if his fitness was lacking before or the coach just trusts him more now but I don't I don't know what the answer is yeah and I mean that's one of those things especially with five subs we're never going to know the answer because I mean keep remember like five subs means half of the on-field players can sub off if the coach wants to use everything so I mean I I guess where my my argument come up then because I think I do like Procalo more than Proger too so I'm having to take like the side of the fence that I didn't even want to be on but (laughs) Procalo still is in a set tier himself um he is on a better team and a better matchup so that's I think why more people want to be on him but I think you really have to make an honest decision with yourself that like is the 400 more like if if I'm having to give up a piece I really like and go down to like a subpar piece to get up to Bracalo, maybe I should just stay on program. I guess that's that's the argument that I would make on that decision. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a valid point, right? Because you yeah, you don't want to get too caught up. You know, yes, Wolfbar- Wolfsburg is in the better matchup, but is it is it that much better? I mean, Bremen's not a good team, so... Right. Um, it's not like I'm getting Arnold. Like, if, if it was like I was getting Arnold, I think that's completely different. Bracalo is definitely like... This, there's Arnold and then Bracalo from a DFS standpoint way under him. Yep, agreed. Um, and then now, now I'll just say this, um, you know, we didn't talk about Dash at all. I think that's because we both really like the price that he's at. Um, when you get split set, he now, keep in mind for those that are just watching that this game here with the eight crosses was no Proger, but now he is the last three games, 11.8, 4.4 versus Dortmund. Like they're never yeah, throw, gonna throw that out. out. Just throw it out, and then eleven point seven last week. Which honestly, we might want to throw out half of that production versus Leipzig because of the red card. But I think it still shows you in a matchup where they, you know, are on level footing, what he can do. Yeah, I mean, I, he just at that price, he's very attractive. Um, you know, he's getting like around a ten point floor. So yeah, and I think you know, even when you brought him up you know, back, I want to say it might even be over here um, a few recordings ago, but it's just because, you know, if you, if you scroll all the way back to the end of the season, past where DK has the logs, I mean, he was a consistent like six to 10 point four performer, even when Proger was on a monopoly. So now let's, you know, let's give him three, four corners and, you know, we've got a great play. So I think he, personally, I do think that um, he and Proger will be the chalk. And then obviously if either one of them um, is out, then the other one's just a lock just hit the lock button and and move on. Um, Any other forwards from a cash perspective? Like, I I think we can just touch on this high end. Like, this is all GBP. Sancho, Holland, Uth. um, Yeah, I mean, what is Uth Uth doing at 10-5? I mean, I just (laughs) – it boggles my mind. But Well, because they had to – if they were going to price down to God, they had to put the rest of the salary somewhere, I guess. (laughs) We'll, 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 get to that. we'll get That's to that true. in a second. But I do think up here, like one name that I, I kind of – there's two names I want to point out um, that I think I'm going to be on in GPP. I like them both. Um, I think Cordoba uh, I think is a fine discount in a way to get some cone exposure. I hate that word. But I do think, you know, he has – how many goals this year now? 12 goals. And lately when he's been on um, – no, he's – Score versus Munich, I'm um, sorry, versus Leipzig before he subbed off. Um, he's just been – he's just a good player. I've watched him a few times. So, I think at 8,100, he's really fair. And then I think uh, Wout Weghurst at 7,400 leading the line for um, Wolfsburg. I think those are fine plays. And if I saw them show up in a cash game, I wouldn't be like, oh, that guy sucks. <laughs> Anybody else up here for you? Um. Not no, not up here. I I agree with those two. I think you're gonna get, well, especially on Cordova, you could get um, some low ownership. Yeah, just because if you're, um, if people are starting to go up, maybe they're trying to go up for like a Dortmund type of piece. Maybe they exactly. don't stop below Tommy. I wish it was a better matchup, but I Dortmund can just possess the hell out of the ball and just mm-hmm. completely take the air out of it. So I don't think that you really. 
do that more than GPP. Um, uh, there was one more. Where is he? Ibisevich. Uh, yeah. I, I think that makes a lot of sense too. If you want to like go double um, sub 6K forwards, I think he's just fine. That's about it. I mean, you know, Frankfurt <laughs> Frankfurt struggles to keep clean yeah. sheets. So, um, yeah, I like I like his upside there. It, and it, I wonder, but I wonder if Piatek gets a start. He sh- and if so, I, I mean, it's it's funny to me that he is eleven hundred more. But again, like if you want some huge like leverage, um, mm-hmm. not only in GPP, but like even if you just want to go off the board a little bit in cash. I mean, you got Proger a hundred dollars more than him, like. Nobody's playing Pi Tech over Proger. Mm-hmm. All right. So the free square of the slate. What what the hell is Kostic doing for 9K? <laughs> I mean, you you could not write a, a better script. He's fully rested, didn't play in the midweek game, playing a, a Hertha team that I think is like bottom five in terms of allowing crosses. Uh, his price goes down. And he's a slight dog, which is the best game script for him. So uh, yeah, there's nothing to think about. Well, I was thinking about this and like how I could uh, could could dish this up. You know <laughs> what they say on the seventh day, God rested. <laughs> but like jokes aside, he, side, he is side, the fantasy like, god. <laughs> I think you know the, the coaches look at he's like, oh man, you're uh, you only threw in like 10 crosses in this session in practice. Are you all right? Do you need a rest? <laughs> like, I mean, this, this guy was put in our lives to cross the ball and to give us floor players like hope for every goal that happens, that there is another guy that can match it and crosses even at 0.7. So um, no, like I, I see no builds where Kostic is not the first guy. Yet. Yeah. I mean, this, this guy helps me, you know, rest well at night, just knowing I can play Philip Kostic on this slate. It's just, it's just, it's just a dream. And now that, now that everybody's on him, watch this going to be like the one time that uh, the fade's <laughs> going to work. But it, it, it honest, honest to God, I don't think even at 12, I think at 12,000, we would still be talking about him as like the first guy in your builds. So I think where there might be a little bit of, um, of question mark maybe like across the industry or there's some decisions to be making is really the second midfielder i think there are two guys in this range that you immediately gravitate towards one that a lineup could make you not want him and make the one other one that easier um without giving out names do you agree with that statement yeah i mean i think there's some you gravitate towards but there's honestly a lot of ways you could go here. I don't, I don't right. think there's like a correct way. I think it just, it's a matter of preference really. And I see you hovering on, on Trimble there. Hold on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so but, I think that that is the most common next click. Uh, now was he, did he just get moved to midfield? Yeah. yeah because, yeah, oh. he, well, no, because he, he's crossed the ball too much, Lee. No. Yeah. Right. He's crossed the ball too much, and now he's getting – he's a little bit too popular. Well, what about Kimmich then? Why is Kimmich not over there? Because he uh, <laughs> he uh, he played defense for long enough. So so he gets the – I mean, hell, why, why, why are some of these guys forwards that – you know, why is uh, Barisha always a midfo- midfield forward, forward when, like, he's – more playing midfield for them than anything else I, I don't know these answers dk doesn't even know let's be real but yeah, yeah. you know so trimble um i didn't pull it up i think he's officially now the second highest crosser in the bundesliga behind a so um you know he takes all of berlin's sets um or i should say like 95 percent of of the sample and then you know in that wing back system that they play he's just always over there just tossing in corners. Look at that, 18, 7, 12, 12, 12 since we returned. And, you know, I, I love this sample, but that 12 is versus Munich, Bayern Munich. So, yeah, it sucks that he's not a defender. Um, but I, personally, he'll be the next guy into my builds. Um, do you see, like, any reason that he wouldn't be the next guy in? 
No, if we're talking a cash build, I have yeah, a hard cash. time getting away from him. Um, yeah, he's like, you know, he's like the Kostich protege. They must have been training together over, uh, you know, quarantine or something. Hey, hey, you know what? We need these guys over into the EPL because um, I think the Rotowire guy said this. It might have been Andrew, but um, how, like, I think people are going to forget how spoiled we've gotten with the Bundesliga and, like, all the fantasy goodness. Like the first time that we get, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a of a good example, but uh, I don't know. Arsenal. I'm trying to think of the the two teams in the EPL I hate the most. Arsenal. Um, yep, that's number one. First your team. How about the first Arsenal Spurs? Actually, those games end up being good, so I'm not gonna. I'm, that, that's a bad one. But just like you know, these favorites that come in that don't cross the ball at all, that do a ton of short corners, like. And we're just going to tilt our faces off versus having Kostic throwing in 23 crosses, Tremel 16, and like that being our life. Like we're, we're, we're going to miss, miss some of this stuff. Yeah, let's, let's take this production while we can get it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, hey, hell, I mean, I think we might get some still, but we'll, we'll just see what DK wants to do. So the, the guy that I was going to mention as like the other one in the range that I think is lineup dependent is Dorita. So I, I think the matchup is great. Like I have no problem um, – going against Frankfurt and then I think you know the cool thing with Frankfurt is you always could just get these just like completely open high scoring games too um, where Kostic is throwing in a ton of crosses and then if you don't have Plattenhart that's the lineup thing that you're going to see then you get Dorita on a set on a set Monopoly so I think you know if you don't see him that I do think that that's the, the situation where Trimmel is not just like an auto lock because you are thinking to yourself could that $500 be put somewhere yeah, Dorita, his floor, you know, even let's say he's in without Plattenhart. Um, I don't think his floor is not as safe as Trimble, but uh, I do like the upside because, I mean, Hertha is favored in this game. Yep. And and that's why I think, you know, the way that bills are going to, you you very well, we might see a lot of Bibisevich in like cash at his price because people wanting a little bit of – Hertha. So, like, along that lines, I want to get your take on this, because I've, I've, I've sniffed around this twice now. What's your take on the, I need exposure to a team? I mean, I, I think there's, there's merit to that theory, but I think people get too caught up in it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, let's say you've got one spot left on your roster, and it's between two players, and, and one of them happens to be on a a team that's, you know, the most highly favored, like a Dortmund, for example. So let's, okay, maybe it's Guerrero and uh, Dorita without Plattenhardt in, right? And so a lot of people are going to be sitting there thinking, oh, I got to get Dortmund exposure. I got to get Dortmund exposure. Yeah. And they're going to plug in Guerrero. But at that point, if that's your only Dortmund play, I think you really just need to be thinking about, in a, you know, who's the better play 1v1 here, Guerrero or Dorita? And if it's Dorita on all sets, um, you know, maybe he's the better play there. So th- that's the way I try to look at it. And so you hit where I've done, because I've seen it so often. And, and maybe it's just something that, like, you know, I see in our, our Discord chat and people asking. But, they're, you know, it'll be like, what's the best Dortmund exposure piece? Or what's the best way to get exposure to XYZ team? And I think in GPP, it's fine. Um, especially if like maybe you're trying to like do mini stacks or whatever. I, I guess that's it's more of a term. I mean, but for cash to me, it's just is like sometimes it's fitting the, the the square peg into the circular hole or the circular peg in a square hole or whatever the heck that term is. But it just becomes like stop trying to look at what the teams are because like soccer, there's ten on field players and a goalie. Like if you're trying to like go, oh, I need to get this exposure. I want a piece of these goals. Like. Uh, I want a piece of the Wolfsburg goal, so I need to play Weghurst, and then Babu scores a goal, and then John Brooks channels his inner World Cup self and finally scores again. Like I played so much John Brooks recently. Um, he he needs to he needs to find that Ghana form again. But I my 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 point on it, and I'm glad that you said the same thing. Is this like just saying that I need this guy for exposure to this team? I don't think ever works. I, I think it's. You can you can make a little bit better argument for like a striker because he is the most likely to score. But to say that I need exposure and now I'm going to play the center center midfielder that's never taken a set. I, I don't think that that's ever going to be right. No, 
I think the way it makes sense is probably, you know, if you're between two guys and it, you know, it's neck and neck in terms of, you know, they have a similar floor. Yeah. Okay. Then you go look at the matchup and say, okay, well, this guy's got the better upside, but other than that. Or, or, you know, I go, you know, like you said, there's one four point between them. You're, you're honestly struggling. Maybe you go, I don't have this team at all. So maybe this, maybe this spreads out my switch or I have three others from the one guy's team. So now maybe that makes a little more sense. So I'm not so all in. Um, but I, I just, I just feel like so often we make some bad decisions. It's just like goalie. And I think that um, it's a really interesting point on this slate is just because you don't have Dortmund in your cash build doesn't mean that you need to like rush off the cast and mire. Yeah. Agreed. Cause you know, you could, you know, Holland and Sancho could fail to score, but, but, you know, Castamar could still have like a negative eight game, you know, when Brandt and Hakimi, you know, each mm-hmm. score a couple goals. So, yep. And just, and that's been a point I actually have been making a lot on our previews is just because you don't like, that's the other like DFS soccer fallacy. I'm, I'm going to like do a myth busters on DFS soccer <laughs> fallacies, but um, like that's the other one. Just because you don't have any of the team doesn't mean rush to the goalie because that's just like actually in a way doubling down on your bet that that team is going to suck. I mean, hell, I, I was the king of it the first two weeks in Bundesliga. So maybe, maybe I've learned my own lesson. So anyhow, all right. Detour over on this stuff. So let's talk about the rest of the midfield. I would, see, I was down on goalie to figure out what the guy's name was. Um, who else do you see in the midfield range? I'm not going to lie. I haven't done a ton of midfield looks because it was like Kostic and Trimble right away. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those two are the most – I mean, you've got Arnold, but he's up there at 8,700. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's you know, a really great – that could be a great, like, either, like, do you want to go, like, off the board and cash and get to an alternative construction using a high four guy? I don't think many are going to be on him at all. No, I mean, I think – let's say you played Ibisevic and – and Tweed Deji, maybe you can get to him and Kostic. Um, well, you could you could over Trimmel, but I think that more often than not, you're going to go, what's the difference between Trimmel and Arnold? Not too huge from a four perspective. Let me use that on upgrading a utility or a defender slot. Um, yeah. So we mentioned, we talked enough about Dortmund. Like Akimi and Guerrero, if you want to, they're fine. Just, just understand their floors aren't, aren't sensational. And you really need to get part of scoring to uh, – to get the double digits. If they don't get a goal or an assist, they won't hit double digits. Same thing, same thing goes with Brandt. Yeah, There's DK, a guy, there, DK wants us to play Brandt all the time. They have him dude, down in that range where you're like, oh, maybe. He's bait. But he always subs. Oh, yeah, 65 minutes. That's all you're getting. I mean, most of yeah. the time. And here's the thing. I loved him at Leverkusen. Like, and if you watch him for, like, the German national team, like, that guy is so good. And I just – Dortmund just has too many guys. They just have too yep. many players. So there is one Dortmund guy I actually want to ask you about. You're not ready for this, by the way. Um, I can't even find him. There he is. Give me your thoughts on Axel Witzel. Because I have had in multiple builds that I land on him. Yeah, he – like, he's kind of a – he's a deep-relying central midfielder, but he seems to – he seems to produce when he's mm-hmm. on the field. Um I don't know if that's just like my subjective view of it, but um, like you know, your the floor is not not safe, but he's he's <laughs> capable of of popping up with a goal and an assist in a great matchup. It's some Dortmund exposure. Yeah. So here's the one thing I've noticed with him because I've done some studying on him because I said a couple of bills I've fallen on him um, when he plays with Delaney um, in the midfield, he's able to go forward a little bit more. Hmm. Um, Delaney kind of sits a little bit deeper um, when he plays with Chan and as a former as a, as a former Liverpool player I know Emery Chan too much Emery Chan cannot always remember his role is in the midfield and he thinks sometimes that he's a striker um, yeah. so when he's in the midfield with Chan it's a little more defensive so I think that that's something to kind of look at um, if he's with Delaney um, speaking of Emery Chan, you will not see him in the midfield pool here, folks, because he played one game at defender last week, scored, <laughs> and DK is like, he's now a defender. Yes, a 5K defender. Hey, I mean, recency bias says he's a hell of a play. I, I, dude, I, I, I tilted so much. Um, and then another site 
and number one player in the world that now all of a sudden is playing Bundesliga, won a GPP with him at, at captain. And I saw somebody make a, uh, um, a comment, man, he's so good. I'm like, nobody with Emre Chan as a center back at their captain is anything more than running an opto. Like, screw that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're, I, I, I'm not going to hate on the guy. Like, he's won a ton, a lot, won a lot more than me, but my God tilted my face off over that one um midfield I, I don't think there's much else here Sebastian Road who would actually have been interesting at 3900 he's listed out um so I, I think that that even makes you know Costage even that bigger of a lot because there's not I, for, I forgot to mention that before now he should take every single corner with Road yeah out. it's crazy the, the, the interesting play down here god you really have to scroll they they hit him Kasinovich I think is uh-huh or just a pure and utter punt to get like a guy that is attacking for Frankfurt and 3,300. Like if he gets five DK, you're not upset. No, I, I think he's got a really good shot to get four or five. And then if he pops up with an assist, then, you know, you're Game crushing. Over. Or, or, I mean, and I, me and you talked about this, I think it was like a showdown slate, but uh, um, he like, Last year, I mean, he had some Europa games where he had like seven, eight shots. So, I mean, it's there. I don't know what's happened to him this year, but, I mean, the, the opportunity is there. Okay, so let's get over to Defender because I think Defender, um, I guess like a lot of decisions decide to say. I think midfield might be the least interesting position. Defender has a ton of options. So maybe, we, maybe we're happy that Tremel's not a Defender this week. But I think um, if – I'm going to make an argument – that if Platt and Hart is in, that he is the top defender on the site for me. What do you think, Lou? Yeah, for me, it would be close with him and August Stinson if mm-hmm. Bittencourt is out. Okay, if Bittencourt's out. But what if – let's? so let's say this. Dorit is in, Platt and Hart is in, August Stinson is in, and Bittencourt is in. Now where do you go? I th- I think I'm going Plattenhart because I think he's going to have the majority over Dorita based on their, their recent history together. Well, I think that it's, it's a lot of, it's a split, but Plattenhart just is very much an open play crosser too. Yeah. Um, that, that's probably the better point. Yeah. Yeah. Do you just, I mean, he probably has a solid, you know, seven to nine DK floor and open play. And then you give him some, some corners and that's where your double digits come in. But, I mean, if you look down his log, so, you know, the, the famous take a corner, get the assist, and now, and now my concussion's too much, let me get off. I mean, he even produces when he gets concussions. It literally, I was listening to the game on the radio. I was in between uh, did some work stuff, and uh, they're like, Platt Hart is, uh, is woozy. He runs over to the corner flag, and then <laughs> goal. And they're like, and there's the sub. I'm like, what? <laughs> Oh, no kidding. He got that assist, like, post-concussion? Yeah, he was down, like, the minute before. And they get to a corner. He runs over to the corner flag and then uh, gets the assist as the sub's getting ready. And he's out. <laughs> what a baller. Yeah, I know, I know. The he- heroes are made on showdown slates. But, um, well, now that settles it. He is the top <laughs> defender. <laughs> but jokes aside, so former German national, um, always takes some corners for them. Uh, Hell, if you see him without Dorita, I mean, he's just a pure lock. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, so I think what, 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 the hardest play, I think, on this site for me, and I think it decides a lot of builds, is Gunter. How are you seeing him in a tough matchup away to Wolfsburg? I mean, I think he's fine in cash because of how consistent he is. Um, but I don't – feel like I need to pay up there um, necessarily. If I'm going to take Plattenhart at 61, I think I'd rather go down at my next defender slot. Okay. And we're in, 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 in most okay. builds anyway. And do you think that that becomes that? So if, if Plattenhart, but if no Plattenhart is in, then does that just lock in Gunter for you? You know, it's going to depend on where I end up in a build. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't played around enough to, to answer that so to your point where you're going and not fully saying it is that even though gunter is probably going to be super 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 chalk that does not mean that he is an absolute lock 
No. Yeah, I, I, that's where I'm at. Because like, I look at logs. It's just kind of like, um, you know, in yesterday's showdowns, um, I thought Munir um, versus Ocampos was like super, super, super close. Like it was until lock, I was like back and forth. And um, Ocampos was at least twice as owned in cash. Um, same in GPP. And he shows up with a PK and an assist and everybody looks and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe that like, this guy went Munir. But, you know, these decisions are so close. Like, and, you know, we can't be results oriented. So to me, it's like, just because Gunter is going to be super high owned, whether he does well or not, doesn't necessarily mean that like he was just a super lock and you were a fish for fading. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, so... I don't know if that made any sense, but okay. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta be you gotta be I'm process still until, orient, process versus results oriented. I'm right. still until of the five minutes that the Ocampos PK and assist hits and went from that was a that, that was a beautiful assist, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. No, he's a great player, but like it was just so funny. I'm like watching the two v two because um, I had a fairly chalky lineup without him, and then um, everybody else, like in cash games everybody had the uh ocampos build and i think until the pk my build was was out flooring the ocampos build and then and then the right. world ended really quick um so i do think though that to your point and even if you go with gunter because there's three defender builds out there um i really in a in a dfs friendly world friedel um being in over augustus and i think would really help construction and at 4600 there's no way i'm not locked by Nate friedel yeah, well, the cool thing is you could just slot in August Stinson, then if Friedel starts, you pivot, and then you could try to do something with that that 600. Yep, and I, I do want to point, you mentioned Bittencourt being out, so there's some samples for Friedel, and I would assume that's going to do the same thing for August Stinson, that when Bittencourt was in, they still split. Um, it's If if they're in with Bittencourt, Rashika, and the um, and one of the defenders, um, Rashika is the like, least likely to take. Yeah, and then uh, Davy Klassen took like three corners last oh, match. I'm not sure what's up with that. I, I mean, I mean, realistically though, there was for the longest time there was no bit in court. Um, so I mean, Augustine just seems like a, what a lot of teams do with these fullbacks that take. They don't want them darting all the way over to the other side because if right. you if you do that, you know your defensive shell. If the corner if the corner is cleared right away and there's a break, your defensive shell is screwed up, and the guys now having to sprint like 120 yards back to his position. So I think that's what it is. Um, but hey, I, I could be wrong. Down here, defender. So like, I think to kind of put a wrap on defender, Gunter, Plattenhart, and then the Werner Bremen fullback, like those are the top three plays. Mbabu will get completely looked over in between them, but he is a really nice play. Yep. Um, do you have anything, Love him. anything you want to say on that? Yeah, I just I love him in uh, GPP as a pivot, mm -hmm. especially like a little mini Wolfberg stack. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see that. Um, Timmy Chandler, if he starts over um, Torre, who's now a midfielder too, just because. Yes, but I I will add that from a DFS perspective, I'm hoping that Danny DeCosta gets a start at 3,900. Is he defender? Yep, ah. right there. This is the last week he'll be defender if he starts. He'll be in the middle, <laughs> I'm sure. But yeah, no, that would be that would be awesome. That fits a ton of builds, and I think he scored midweek versus Bayern. Yeah, yeah, came up, came off the bench to score. So yeah, that's that was my thought that maybe he gets rewarded with a start here. Yeah, and I mean, for those like longtime soccer guys, last year in Europa League, like that used to be the only time we saw um, Bundesliga was in the in the Europe sites, so the Europa and Champions League, like. Danny DaCosta was like 6K most slates or like 5,500. And he was playing wing back and was a double digit machine. So I think that that's a great shout. Um, if you need the salary, um, Werner Bremen has been playing like a wing back system last week. And I can't say his name right. Gebre Selassie. Um, I think he put up like an eight or 10 DK. Uh, let's see. I can click. I, I forgot. I can click on this. 8.9. <laughs> but I mean, okay. for... I mean, look at the look at the the points out here. Seventeen point seven. That was the goal, but seven point five no goal or assist. Seven, six point two, five point eight, eight point nine. Thirty nine hundred defender. Why not? Um, 
What about Marcus Sutner, man? Tw- coming off 21 crosses. I mean, how is that not a lock? Yeah, I think it was lock of the slate here, Sutner. Um, you you got to love a guy playing in the back three. Red card happens. Slashes in 21 crosses. Unbelievable. <laughs> did, you see the, did you see Eric Tommy's game? No, I, no. Here, I, I, this, this is way off, but people are still watching. They just have to deal with it. Uh, ah, I don't know who that is. Uh, actually, I do know who Ingrid works, and you should never play him. But uh, Tommy ended up 12 crosses, six oh. shots. They just, just – that, that stack just went – off after yeah the well we can let people get sucked into uh yeah don't play. don't play them versus dortmund <laughs> from Dusseldorf. Un- unless you unless you know that emory chan is just pissed off and is going to get a red then <laughs> then play um down here i don't remember anybody else sticking out i'm just looking john brooks hero goal maybe yeah his floor has been like decent um I no. mean, it's a center back. It's a center back. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. But, like, you know, if you want to correlate some with, you know, 7.2 and 6.6, like you said, it's a good call. But if you want to uh, correlate some with Castiles, it works. Um, all right. Let's jump to goalie. So, I think there's a ton of builds, and he probably will still be chalky, Kasten Meyer. But I don't think there's any way that I play him because Dortmund's just shot production just is not there. Um, yeah? No? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I I have Dortmund projected for the most shots on goal, like by a landslide. So, you know, that is what you want to see. Oh. Um, well, hang on, I'm not done. That that is what you <laughs> want. <laughs> that is what you want to see for a low price keeper, right? You just want mm-hmm. that save volume because we don't honestly think that Dusseldorf's going to win this game or probably even draw it. Um, but. Dortmund just scares me because they're so clinical with their chances this I mean this whole season and I don't Especially know if Holland is in yeah and I I don't and again to go back to your point it's like even if I'm mostly fading Dortmund because they're overpriced that that is not an immediate justification to come here at keeper because you know like Holland and Sancho get one goal each they don't pay off their salary but then you still you know Casemar gets crushed so right yeah I, he scares right. me your, a bit. your leverage or your reason your rationale for doing it still got fucked like, yeah. it's just one of those things that you're just like ah, I, I still got screwed on this um I think that right above him I think Swallow may end up getting really popular I mean he's the guy that I was trying to target because um you know, like we've seen Wolfsburg struggle, um, and we've also seen Wolfsburg pump out some shots too. So I think that it makes sense from that perspective. And Freiburg's not that bad. That's yeah, where I think. I'm yeah, they they it. like Fre- Freiburg is one of these weird teams that they're they're like a mid table team, but they will mm. just let their opponents like have the ball and pump in shots and crosses. So it, it actually works out pretty well for their keeper. Kind of like Burnley. We're, we're, I'm starting. I'm starting yeah. to try to like get my EPL juices back. Right. Then, but- Let's, let's let them shoot outside the box. We trust our goalie to take it. I mean, that's why Tom Heaton was such a god for so long. Yeah. Was it Heaton um, or are they a Pope now? Well, it's Pope now, but if you yeah, remember, yeah. like, Heaton went through a stretch, I don't know if it was last year or two years ago, but I think he had, like, <laughs> a 15 saves versus Man U, and it was, like, 30-something points, and then he followed up the next week. He had, like, 26. He, just awesome. That was, that was a <laughs> yeah, great as a- as a Spurs fan, like Burnley is the epitome of a team that I hate to face because they're just going to sit eleven behind the ball yeah. and and just frustrate the hell out of you. And then and then count. I mean, I mean, you know, we're going to go off on it, but that used to like for people that don't know, like that's why Wolverhampton is uh all, like their record versus the top six is just so insane because Nuno has no problem just going. I'm just going to sit everybody behind. So it's Raul. Yeah. Raul Jimenez and some of them put what versus City or this year put Triore by him and said guys like don't cross midfield just wait for one moment and go and I think it was like the first time they touched the ball in like the 59th minute they score and then Triore scores another one on top like those type of teams that have a ton of discipline and will actually do it like those they're so dangerous but I mean I don't know enough about Freiburg but I, I've seen like you it does seem like that that might be the chance because they frustrated the hell out of Leipzig a couple of weeks ago yeah Exactly. Um, I do just want to bring up, I, I think the only other goal I just want to bring up, like you can go up in the top, but I think if you just want like somebody low owned that maybe could like break the slate, um, Jarstein um, here, um, 
from Eartha. So I just like playing goalies versus Frankfurt because yeah. Frankfurt gets <laughs> down. Because, like, Andre Silva is not clinical. Bastos, not clinical. Kamada, not clinical. Kostic, the god. We love him. Not clinical. Um, so these guys mm-hmm. just don't mind just throwing shots on. Um, and so it just gives you a good save upside. And, you know, if they're not finishing, you can, you can really get uh, – get a lot of saves and maybe a clean sheet win. And then all of a sudden your goalie shows like 22. So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you can easily win a GPP this weekend uh, with Jarstein at keeper and Kostic in your midfield. Oh, and, and you could do Danny DeCosta on the other side. Yeah. Um, I've seen some build where maybe you land like a Kamada. Like, I mean, I always just go back to it. Um, you can go back to, actually, I think it's gone, but like, I interviewed uh, Parlor Boss when he won um, the two-game Champions League, the last Champions League slate we had, and he had a full Liverpool stack versus Oblock. Because Liverpool ended up, I think Robertson and uh, TAA had like 45 crosses. You still had two goals, and Oblock, I think, showed up with like 11 saves. Like, it can happen, like crazier, especially on two gamers. But do you have any other final thoughts on this slate before we get out of here? No, it's going to be a fun slate. Enjoy, you know, what's potentially one of the last big Bundesliga big slates we see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and there's a, a big high stakes one that I've gotten a couple of DMs. Um, I'm sure it probably showed on my screen share that uh, everybody asks, what am I saving all my crowns for? If, I, if, uh, if I'm worried <laughs> that an apocalypse. Crown rich. Um, I, I don't actually have a good answer. Uh, I, I hold on to them like they're my treasure. Um, I think that's what DK wanted. <laughs> But I have enough for that. I think it's a 444. I have enough left over. So I don't know. It might be time to redeem. The, I, when, it, when it first came out, I'm like, I think this might be the time I want to do it. And then I saw Dortmund as the biggest favorite. And uh, I just, <laughs> ugh. But I, I, I do think that there's a lot of routes to build that are not Dortmund. So I, I, I'm feeling a little bit better. Guys, good luck this week. Uh, Lee, appreciate it as always. And we will talk to you maybe midweek for EPL. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll tweet out when we're doing the next one, all right?